Hello lads. Since I've been alive for a little while, <clears throat> and I think I'm older than probably most of my audience, although there are probably some people out there who are as old or perhaps even older than me, but uh, on the whole, um, I think I'm, I probably, uh, my audience skews to be younger than, than myself. Um, I, I thought it would be maybe interesting to offer a perspective on um, how things have changed, you know, certain things that, that, that come to mind. Um, and, you know, I, I could go into more detail about a lot of these, but I just want to sort of list off a few. Um, you know, there are the more obvious things, for, you know, the more obvious and much more negative things. Uh, the, uh, I, I never would have dreamed that, that there, there, at some point uh, in my lifetime, it would have been uh, seen as okay to have drag shows for children, to have drag queens uh, presenting, uh, reading books and, and doing whatever they do, doing their whole drag routine uh, explicitly for children, uh, and that that would somehow become this big cultural battlefield. You know, in thinking back in 1992, 21 years old, I, I don't, I, I just don't, <laughs> that just, that's just an arbitrary uh, year I thought of, an arbitrary age that I thought of sometime in the past. Uh, it's not like things were great back then. It's not like I thought, you know, oh, the, the, the culture uh, is, is going in a, in a, in a good direction uh, and uh, I'm optimistic about the future or anything like that. I've never been particularly an optimist, <clears throat> but can you really blame me? Um, <laughs> uh, living in the time that I live, but I, I uh, just did, didn't think that would ever it would ever come to pass that something like that would be okay, uh, and that it would be controversial uh, if you uh, if you challenge that, or that it would be controversial if you thought that it's not okay to change children's uh, uh, gender, you know, to make children undergo mutilated, uh, undergo mutilations to their genitals. Uh, children, you know, by children I mean under the age of 18. And that would be a controversial issue that, that anyone, anyone but a small group of, uh, you know, fringe radicals would, uh, would think was okay. Um, you know, about the same number who think pedophilia is okay. Uh, you know, I, I would never have expected that. I would never have thought that, um, that, that pronouns would become a, a political minefield. Um, and that people would, uh, would volunteer their pronouns. Um, uh, and that assuming someone's gender would be, uh, a crazy thing to do. I mean, it's sort of, to me, it's just like, I mean, you, you see some, you, you, you assume things about people all the time. Uh, and, uh, you're usually right. Things that are self-evident. Okay. And gender is usually not always, but usually self-evident. All right. But now, of course, if you, if you look a certain way, but say you're not that way, then, then, uh, it's, uh, you know, it's a fireable offense to uh, to assume otherwise. Never thought that that would be this kind of thinking would become. I don't I don't know if it's mainstream, but it would get mainstreamed. You know, uh, would get pushed. Uh, and so far, I'm just talking about the the negative uh, things. In general, I you know I I wouldn't think that changing genders, what used to be called sex change, you know, I mean, in the seventies and eighties, there were sex change operations. People uh, underwent them. Some people, some small subset of people. And it wasn't really like, it was like, who cares? Okay. Uh, it wasn't this huge hot, but hot button issue. Um, it was just something that some people did and, and yeah, they were, they were seen as, as weird or, or whatever, 
but nobody really cared that much about it one way or the other. Nobody got upset or exercised about about it. I never thought that that, that would become that the tr uh, the trans thing, the transgender thing, would become a bigger cultural minefield than uh, uh, than homosexuality. Um, and to me, you know, homosexuality always has existed. It's it's not a thing that's just been totally astroturfed. Um, it's, uh, of course, they, they've, uh, uh, there's, there have been a lot of, uh, negative things that have been done where, uh, with using the, 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 the issue of homosexuality and, and, uh, normalizing it or, or treating it as if, you know, it were, uh, a, a thing, uh, using it as a cudgel, using it as a weapon, um, uh, to, to, uh, to push, for you know just this depopulation agenda which i think is what what it's being used for but i i, I have never doubted in my mind that people out there uh you know are find themselves attracted to members of the of their own sex uh, and that's always been the case and you know back in the 70s and the 80s and the 90s there there were gays there were gays and lesbians then and it was sort of like uh yeah okay they exist so what um <laughs> you know, um, but it seems to me that the, the, the transgender stuff has been much more just created out of whole cloth, just just astroturfed to the max, just because the the instances of it uh, before it got blown up, before it, it uh, was pushed so hard um, by the established classes. By the billionaires and the corporations and uh, influential people in government um, everywhere. Before that, that was the case. It was just this very, very um, off the beaten path. Uh, you know, uh, uh, weird, eccentric, oddball kind of uh, kind of a thing. It wasn't really a. a, a it wasn't a. Uh, it wasn't even a culture war. Uh, question, you know, like abortion and, and uh, you know, normalizing homosexuality are, or were, or have been, or still are, still are. Um, it just was uh, completely, like I said, obscure, off the beaten path. Um, so these are changes that have happened, and, and, and I'm not, and I don't want to just, I wanted to start with these negative changes, um, because they are undoubtedly part of what's happening or, or, or the general uh, uh, ways in which the world has changed but uh, um, but I, I don't I don't want to just dwell on those or, or have this just become this 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 uh, black pill dystopian you know oh we're, we're sliding further and further into, de into depravity kind of uh, kind of a video uh, just because <laughs> there's already plenty of that out there already uh, we don't really need to hear that too much more often. Uh, but those are changes that I've seen that, that, that do need to be acknowledged, and so I have. I didn't predict the Internet. Um, and, uh, boy, we're, now we're still on the, the black pill train, I know, <laughs> social media, um, and, uh, and the, the kind of uh, changes that that has wrought. Uh, but the, a lot of those go hand in hand with the other sorts of things that we've talked that I've talked about already because these these uh, big pushes uh, for societal change uh, you know against tradition um, um, in in various various ways and for the acceptance of you know increasingly fringe sexual behavior um, probably wouldn't have been uh, possible without the, without social media, because you know, print, newspapers, and, and magazines, and and stuff that that can only go so far. That doesn't permeate as much. But there's something about uh, uh, care, the internet and carrying the internet around with you on a smartphone, which of course I do, and which can be used for good. Uh, I'm recording these videos on on uh, my uh, smartphone, and I do other things related to. Uh, related to my writing and, and, uh, other, th other, uh, uh, aspects of, uh, my, uh, 
my entire uh, shtick, as it as it were, that uh, I is my effort in my meager way to try to change things for the better, and so have other other people have used the, the the medium of the internet in the same way. So it could be said that the internet, just in and of itself, is is just uh, is neutral, and it can even be said that that social media uh, could be neutral. It but it just seems that negative things are pushed. Maybe, maybe it th negative things are much more easily pushed via uh, uh, social media. It's it's much more easy to to uh, stoke uh, a uh, uh, st to stoke hysteria uh, and to um, conduct witch hunts against dissenters uh, on social media um, than it is just uh, in life. Just apps and social media offline but I wouldn't have a lot of the friends that I now have without without the internet without social media I wouldn't have wouldn't uh, be have been able to publish my work probably a, a whole lot of it um, without uh, you know the alternative publications that that sprung up with with the internet um, which made publication much easier uh, where you didn't have to just be somebody who, uh, you know, had an, you had to, where you had to get an agent and you had to, to, to suck up to the right people in the publishing industry, you know, and, and, uh, uh, and there were only a few, you know, publishing houses out there and it was, you know, uh, or, or only a few major ones and, and the minor ones, you know, it was much harder to get, uh, distribution and, and to get, uh, publicity. Um, so I have to say as a writer, you know, there are a lot of benefits that have, uh, uh, accrued from, uh, from the internet. Um, but I do also understand at the same time that lots of mischief has been done and, you know, people have asked the question, and I think this is maybe related to the Mandela effect, although I, I still think that, that, uh, a lot of things pertaining to the Mandela effect are just unexplainable. But I do think that, you know, just like in, in, uh, in 1984, where they could change the past, they, they could, they could shoot certain stories down the memory hole. Uh, and it seems to me that, that they can change objectionable material when it's online, you know, when it's, uh, uh, an ebook and it has, uh, objectionable material, you know, the stuff that, that uh enlightened people now supposedly see as as uh as problematic um and and, and you know they're doing it partly they're they're you know it's it's out there uh it's already being talked about you know i, I talked to, I, I spoke of how agatha christie and um and who was it ian fleming how their novels were uh getting revised to take out uh you know a lot of the things that they think modern audiences don't want to read. The truth is, it's 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 not what they what modern audiences want or don't want to read. It's what they think they should read, and the things that they think they ought not read. So it's not for the benefit of modern audiences. It's for the benefit of the uh, the modern censors. Um, so again, this is all negative stuff. I think I'm, I'll just uh, I'm going to make this a video a video in and of itself. Um, and then I'll, I'll record another one where I talk about, uh, uh, some of the things that, that aren't so much, um, about this, uh, uh, uh culture war, the world's falling apart, uh, you know, depravity everywhere kind of thing, which, you know, you have to acknowledge cause it is, it is true. It's part of what's happening. It's part of what's out there, but I really tire of, of fixating on it. And I try not to fix, try, I try not to fixate on it, um, just because I don't think that's healthy. Uh, it, it teaches learned helplessness. It teaches uh, just the, the notion that uh, whatever you do, nothing's going to change, so you might as well just just uh, just give it up. Um, which is not uh, not not a uh, not a positive uh, way to approach life. Uh, I think you'll agree. I hope you'll agree. So let me wrap up this video, and then then I'll start another one where I, I talk about some other stuff that doesn't that isn't so culture war related, 
uh, in this is also, al but also represents changes that I would not have predicted, uh, you know, back in the earlier part of my life.